This is Scott Travis with Bird Dog and Opportunities with Scott Travis. It's Monday, September 1st, Labor Day. We're, uh, we're into September already. Pretty soon we're going to have, uh, we have Christmas right around the corner. Or just, geez, I can't even believe that it's that far into the, uh, into the year. So tonight uh, we'll try and make this uh, a little bit shorter than normal unless there's a bunch of questions. Like uh, last week we had a lot of questions. That was awesome. It was great. I appreciate everything that you guys do when you do the, do ask the questions. Um, again, we'll start it off. If there is any questions, just type them in. I'm going to be looking over here uh, throughout the, the broadcast, the webinar tonight. Uh, if you have a question you want to go on live, just raise your hand. There's a little hand button and just push that button. It'll flag me and says, hey, you know, so-and-so wants to talk, which was always welcome if you want to come on and talk. Uh, once again, if you're, if you're too intimidated or don't want to do that, then uh, please just type in your question. And as you type your question in, I'll read it exactly how you type it. So please keep it clean. So far, we've been pretty good with that. Um, tonight, we're going to go over uh, kind of a goals that you have in mind. What is the goal? The end result, the goal to uh, to bird dog, to wholesale, to uh, flip the properties, to even to, to hold the properties. Um, we're going to kind of go a, a bit over the numbers. Uh, that's that's what I've been having the most questions and problems with when people have uh, emailed me. Um, and once again, my email is scott at c2crea.com. If you have any uh, questions that you come up with, after this webinar or that you have an issue with, just feel free to email me at that uh, at that email. And throughout the webinar tonight, we'll, we'll be posting that so that you guys can, can do that. Um, you can get a hold of me anytime. Most of the people that are on here tonight, there's, there's for, a, for a Labor Day, I just want to thank you guys for showing up. There's a lot of people in here. Um, we'll, we'll try and be as concise as I can. Uh, if there's anything that you need answered right then, I'll try and answer it right right away. Uh, if we're on a topic that you that you have a question for, you know, just uh, either raise your hand, and I've gone over that and over that. So we'll get it started. September first, uh, Bird Diet Opportunities with Scott Travis, and I am the host, Scott Travis. So thank you so much again for attending. So what we do is uh, we all need a goal when we're when we're doing rehab when we're doing uh, wholesaling, whenever we're doing anything, you know, we need a goal in mind of what, what the end result's going to be. You know, and, and for this first, the first part of this webinar, I, I kind of want to go over this just a little bit. It has nothing to do with the 21-day challenge. It has nothing to do with, with anything else. This is just my, um, my kind of introduction into what I want to go into tonight. So we all need a goal, and this is specifically speaking about uh, bird dogging, uh, rehabbing, wholesaling, you know, just this mindset tonight is this is what I kind of want to stick on. I don't want to stick on what your goals are for the future or every, anything else, but just the goal in being a bird dog or being a rehabber. So what's the number one goal in real estate? I'll let you think about for that for a minute, you know, and I know that there's going to be a, a ton of, of answers, um, but, you know, your goal, there's going to be goals for different people, you know, whether, you know, do you have a goal in mind? Normally, you know, I would say nine times out of 10 people, you know, they just see the big dollar sign. That's, that's their major goal. And, and I'm not saying that that's a bad goal to have. And I'm not saying that that's a wrong goal to have. That's pretty much high on the list is what you need to do. Um, what should it be? You know, and, and I've just put a few things out here. Obviously they're decadent, they're, um, you know, extravagant. You know, if your goal is to go on vacation, um, drive a nicer car, get a boat, you know, fancy jewelry, you know, that, that's kind of, that's kind of a product of what we need to do. We need to look at the, at the long term in, in starting into real estate. There's, there's one, you know, underlying thing in this whole, in the whole scheme of this is what it should be. And if you don't know that answer yet, you know, I'm going to hit it here in a minute. But when you start in real estate, when you start doing, when you start a job, what, what should the goal be at the end? So the number one goal in real estate is a profit. That is the basic of doing real estate. You cannot, you cannot survive in real estate. You cannot um, 
have an, a, a lasting career in real estate. You cannot, um, if, if you're investing and you do not make a profit for yourself or if you have hard money or if you have lenders or if you have a family member that you're borrowing money from, if you don't make a profit in real estate, your real estate career is just about done. I mean, right from the get go. That's it. That is, this should be the number one goal in real estate for you is a profit. Um, there's going to be times when you're going to make a lot of money. There's going to be times where you're going to lose money. I, I don't know anybody that I've run into or in contact with in real estate that hasn't lost money in a deal. Now they may not have made as much as they wanted to. Um, that's a whole different, that's a whole different scenario. But if you go into real estate and everything works out that your numbers work out and in the end there is a profit, then you're a success in real estate. Now, whether it be a big success or a little success, you know, sometimes the little successes add up to a big, add up to the big, the big ones. So, you know, your, uh, your mindset, whenever, you know, whenever you're looking at a deal, whenever you're doing anything that has anything remotely to do with real estate is the end goal is a profit. There has to be a profit in the deal. And why I'm going over this, you know, kind of hard right now and, and tonight is for the simple reason that there's, I'm looking up here and there's 18, 22 people right now. Um, the biggest thing that I'm finding with, with deals that are being sent over is the profit is just not there. Um, we're going to go over the numbers and, and to see, you know, how we can come up with a profit at the end of it. But, you know, looking, just looking in MLS or looking with uh, your realtor or uh, you might have a bird dog that's sending you deals, a wholesaler. The bottom line is when you purchase the property, after you rehab the property, after you pay your holding costs, which is going to be your hard money, um, your gas, electric. We kind of talked about that this, this afternoon, this morning on the radio show, you know, their holding costs is encompasses quite a bit. When you're rehabbing a property, there's electric use, electric being used. There's water being used. There's gas being used. If you're doing some on the East Coast in the winter time, you know your contractors, the paint, the um, drywall. You know that all has to be a cer certain temperature. So if if the outside is 30 degrees, your paint is never going to dry on the inside. So you're paying for that gas for the heater to go on. So your holding costs are a lot when it comes to the end of the deal. Um, you also have your uh, your realtor's fees at the end. So you you have a, a large amount of money that is going into the, the, the project that has nothing to do with the rehab, it has nothing to do with the purchase price. So those are the, so there's, those are quite a few of the things that are getting looked over when I'm getting the deal sent to me. And I just wanted to kind of really go over that tonight and, and, and hit on those a few times because – that's, you know, if you overlook that, or here's an example too, is, is you'll watch the, um, the shows, you know, the 30 minute hour shows on, you can pull any city, uh, rehabbing Boston, the Montelongo show, the, um, uh, flipping Vegas, you know, all those, you know, there's, a, there's, they never show you though. You know, I shouldn't say they never, most times they don't tell you what the holding costs are. A lot of them don't even tell you the realtor's fees at the end, how much it's going to cost them to sell that property. So you could have a property that, you know, when you're looking at it just on the surface, well, my gosh, there's, there's sixty, seventy thousand dollars in that, in that, in that deal. But you, you, you have to take into consideration all the costs, not just the rehab costs. Okay. That's the, that's the big thing. There's a whole bunch of, of, of costs in, incurred into these. Today we're going to look at the money. Let's see how the money works in in our deals. We're going to, you know, and once again, the end goal is to make money. If you're doing this for practice and you're going to spend three months on a on a job, and at the end of that job you're going to make a thousand, two thousand dollars, is that really going to be worth you know worth your time? Now, as a bird dog, what we've what we've set up also is if you send it over to us, um, we're going to look at the deal, make sure you're going to get paid for the deal. So. If you're just bird dogging, yeah, you know, and there's money in the deal, you're definitely going to get paid. But I'm going to tell you, you know, 100% of the time that uh, 
we're going to make sure that there's money left in it so that we're not going to be held at, held at the end with no profit. And I think this, this webinar should just be profit. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the main goal for, for bird dogging and, and for this. You've got to have a profit. And I'm going to say that a thousand times tonight. You need to check your numbers and check your numbers and check your numbers. Okay. Money will never be magic in this game. In the real estate game, money doesn't magically appear from somewhere. The only time that that happens is when you account for possibly, you know, you in your budget, you're going to replace the roof. Well, you have someone that comes over there and says, really, the roof is fine. You know, it's not, it doesn't need a roof. Or you think that, um, you know, you do your walkthrough before you purchase the property and maybe a toilet doesn't flush. So you're anticipating a big expense in, you know, a clogged line, a broken line, and then that all of a sudden isn't. So, you know, money's not, not going to ever magically appear on, a, on your job. There's ways of saving money when you're doing a rehab. There's ways of uh, building money into more profit at the end, meaning if you were to add a bedroom or if you were to uh, add a bathroom to the property. But see, those are all the things that we're going to go over before we even put an offer in, before we even get the offer accepted, because that's, that's how we're going to work our deal. We're going to find out where the money is in that deal. Uh, and when I say deal, the property, the house, so you know what, I mean, you're all pretty knowledgeable when I talk about a deal, that means the house. So money will never be magic in the real estate game. It's not automatically going to, uh, you know, reappear the, it, somewhere else. You're going to have, um, what might happen is the market might take a turn. So you might be able to uh, ride the market up. You have a, um, <clears throat> you have a goal to sell the property at 200. Well, 200,000 and then within three, four, five months that you're doing the rehab, the market's gone up. Say now that the, now the property's at 220,000. If you want to call that magic, okay, that's magic, but it, you know, you cannot count on that. So check your numbers and then check them again. And that's what we're here for. If you have a deal um, and you would like us to look at it, it's Scott at C, the number two C R E I A dot com. Uh, what what will happen is that will come over here, and I'm going to say this a lot of times. I know that most of you have been on this. There's quite a few new people, but there's a lot of people that have been on here more than once that um, you know the you know the scenario, know how it works. You you send us the deal. I'll go over it, look at it. If it looks decent, if it looks decent, now I'm going to tell you that I skim it very. I, I will I will look at it more than you will look at it as far as going into a little bit more depth, but I'm not the final say. What happens from there, it goes to Ivan. If Ivan approves it, then it comes back to me and I look at it even harder. So Ivan's the money guy. He sees where all the money's at. He knows uh, the ins and outs, where we're gonna come into pitfalls. Once again, if you've dealt with us before, or if you've heard me speak, we're all pretty knowledgeable about doing it. We've all done it independently. We've all done it by ourselves, Pete, Ivan, and myself. We've all had our own, um, our own, you know, uh, rehabs that we've done by ourselves. We've come together as a group, and now we're pretty much specializing in what we're good at and, and where we're good at. Um, Ivan is great with the numbers. I've been a contractor for years, um, and Pete knows how to get uh, knows how to get our the word out there that what we're looking for. So that's you know I know that you you've heard that before, but that's exactly the way it works. On, on the way we're doing this. So, you know, money's not gonna come out out of the woodwork and all of a sudden just, you know, lay it on your doorstep. What we're gonna do is we're gonna research it. You're gonna research it, you're gonna send it to us, I'm gonna research it, Ivan's gonna research it, it's gonna come back to me, I'm gonna research it again, then we're gonna do our offer. So, we, I know I've gone over some of this stuff before, but it's Labor Day, I kinda wanted to make this a little bit shorter. Um, I'm here for questions, I keep looking over to my right. Um, so that if you have something that you, that's pressing that you need to talk about, then bring it up and we'll, we'll go right through it. Raise your hand. I'll, I'll unmute you and we'll be good. So um, we've gone through this, but this is the timeline. You need to get your team in place, your realtors, your wholesalers, your off-market properties. You need to get that stuff in, in, into place. People helping you. Multiply your time. Get, get people helping you and working with you, which is basically working for you. You define your property. Whatever city that's in, Whatever state that's in, we if uh, most of the people here know that um, we're from 
Boston, we've got Atlanta going. We have an Atlanta deal that should be, the rehab should be done within the next a week from Friday is the um, deadline. And then we start to get to charge back the contractor if he's not done. Um, there's Florida, there's California. We've got uh, million dollar deals that we're looking at in California. We've got a couple that we've been in and out of contract with. Um, so just, you know, your location right now is not, is not an issue with us. I know that Ivan and myself are planning on going back to Boston. Um, from what I, from what I've heard, uh, that I know that we are going to have uh, one of the guys, Paul, from um, Flipping Boston on the radio show. Um, I don't know if it's this week or next week, and we're going to be uh, – actually, Pete used to work with him uh, when he was doing the, the training – the seminar circuit, I believe, and um, we're going to try and get our, our hands in there. So we're going to have Diane. She's got a couple of great contacts that are back there. We're going to get in, in touch with uh, Pete. We're going to see – uh, Peter, not our Pete, but uh, Peter from Boston. We're going to try and get uh, an end with that. Um, so we're we're all across. So if you have a deal, send it over to us. So we're going to find the, get the team in place, find your property, check your numbers, check your numbers, check your numbers. That's where we're going to have um, – you're going to look at them. I'm going to look at them. Ivan, me, then we're going to go back to it. Okay, comps. Your comps are going to be your – your comps are going to be where your number should be be derived from um, the sale price at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. If that's what the houses are going for, there's no reason that we're going to even think that we're going to get three hundred fifty thousand. You know, it's a it's a logical a logical expectation of the market of where you're at. <clears throat> so, if we're if we're buying a, a two bedroom one bath house in Southern California next to the beach, that's a million six, and we're looking at a place. I don't. I'm just going to pick a place in. Um, Atlanta, Georgia. That's a three-bedroom, two-bath for for twenty-six thousand. So I mean, you know, we're not going to take California prices, obviously, and and put them into in, in uh, Atlanta and vice versa. You can't do that. So I don't know every particular market. I I can do my research. Give me a day, day and a half, and I could probably pretty much the deal that you send over to me. I could pretty much tell you where we're at within a couple hours if you wanted. Um, where we should price that or where that price point should be. Uh, and that's what I, that's what's going to come from the comps. Um, know what the profit will be, and I have in parentheses adjustable. Adjustable meaning your profit. What is your ultimate goal at the end of the profit? That's adjustable. Say you have a profit uh, that you want to make fifty thousand dollars at the end of it. Are you willing to go down to forty thousand dollars? That's what I mean by adjustable. Don't take it as a you need to make twenty thousand dollars, and then when you see that your 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 costs are going up, then you adjust it. You adjust your profit before, not during or after. Okay, if that makes sense to you. If you, if you don't understand that, raise your hand or or, or ask that question because I'll try and go over. But I think I'm going over it pretty well. Know that, know what the profit will be in the beginning. When we when we go through the deal, we will know exactly what we should be making at the end of the deal. No no questions asked. Hold on. <laughs> my wife got something going um, so know what the profit will be and adjust so if you're willing to take less but know that you're going to be willing to take less in the beginning of the of the um, project not during the middle or at the end that's when you should um, and once again there's my information and contact information Scott at C the number two C R E I A dot com okay quick check on the numbers when you're running through these okay you need to check your ARV after repair value. And where you're going to get your after repair value is comps. That's the only, that's the only solid, um, legal, legitimate, however you want to put it, that's, that's where that's going to be. And I see that there is a question. Um, yes, yes, Diane, I am going to walk you through an example. And that's on a slide coming up in Two more slides, and that's that's what I'm going to try and really focus on. Um, just trying to go through this a little bit, um, trying to get your mindset on a goal. The goal is a profit. We need the profit, so let's uh, let's focus on that. I'm trying to work you through on how to get to that point. Um, but yes, I'm going to. I promise you. So check the uh, quick numbers. Check check your ARV, your bed and bath. This is all basic stuff that we're going to go through. Um, 
your square footage on your house, we have to be within 100 square feet um, if we're going to do a comp. So if we have a 100 to 200 square feet, excuse me, um, if we have a 1,500 square foot house, we're going to go 1,600 to 1,400. So between 1,400 and 1,600 square foot for that 1,500 square foot um, house that we're looking at purchasing. Your numbers check, your rehab costs. Now your rehab costs are going to vary from every every rehab that we've done. I've never had one come out the exact same. Okay, so if, are you just going to need carpet, paint, tile, lipstick, or are you going to need to? Um, is there drywall work? Are you going to rip out the kitchen? Does it need two new bathrooms? Um, those are all the costs that are going to be coming and uh, be incurred with the, with the rehab. Now, what we're what we just started. I'm going to interject this real quick. What we just opened up is a um, uh, rehab consulting. Now you guys are getting all this for free on Monday nights. I mean, this is it. I mean, this is, you know, it's when the rehab consulting, we're, we're targeting new rehabbers that are doing it, hard money lenders, uh, people that have been in it for a while, but have a hard time uh, with the construction, the construction side of it. So what we're offering is to come in at the beginning of the, of the job. Once you've closed on it, excuse me, before you've closed on it to talk you through and see if your expectations meet along with the contractor's expectations. Look at line item for your contractor's bill. Look at exactly what's expected of you, what's expected of your contractor. Make sure your contractor's not taking advantage of you. Make sure that you're, you don't have unrealistic expectations of your contractor. If you, the biggest thing is, is when you guys, when people come in and say, I have a hundred thousand dollars to do a rehab, can you do it for that? You know, I don't know too many contractors that are going to say, no, I can't do it for that. Nope, I can do it. But what's going to happen is he's going to get through, and just to get that job, he's going to get it, and then there's going to be change orders, meaning that, oh, well, this was unforeseen. We have this that's went, that's gone wrong. I need you to sign off, and, and I need $10,000 for this. I need $6,000 for that. So we're going to kind of go through what your what your property is, look at what you have, look at what the contractor is, is, is assessing is wrong with the property, Check the contractor out. Make sure he's licensed. Make sure that he knows what he's doing. Check up on jobs. Um, so this is this is something that we're trying to add value to you guys as rehabbers and um, people that need it. So it's going to be the re, uh, rehabbing uh, C to C um, forward slash rehab consulting. Actually, there's a landing page. It, it explains what we do. Um, there's five bullet points. We try and go over the new rehabber. The hard money lender, that's what we're going after as, as a layer of insurance and a protection for the for the hard money lender, meaning that you know they want to lend out money and they're lending it out a lot of times to people that have never done this before. So they don't know I don't want to say they don't know what they're doing, but they might have some unrealistic expectations on the way it should be run and the way it should go. So we try and, and, and minimize their losses, uh, minimize their time. Uh, on a job, meaning that if the contractor tells you, yep, not a problem, we can get it done by September 1st. Well, August 20th, you see that, you know, there's no way that's going to get done. You know, that's, that's what we come in for. We try and hold your hand, walk you through the whole, the whole process and do checkpoints. Make sure that this is done by this time. Make sure that this is done before you make your next payment, your next draw. A draw is just a payment that the contractor looks for. That's how he keeps his business running. So it's it's a value, and, and what's was really kind of crazy about it is this all came about when the past, not this weekend, but the, the previous two weekends, I've had probably, well, there's been four people that have called me and said, Scott, I'm, I have this problem. What do I do? And it's always been with the contractor. It's always been, you know, my contractor said this and now he's not doing it. And then when we get right back to the root of the root of where it started, it all starts in the beginning. It, it's, it's the expectation of the rehabber. It's the contractor that's been told he needs to fit within this time frame. You know, whether that's, you know, fair or not, he's, he wants the job. I mean, he's looking to keep his guys employed. He wants to make sure that his bank account, you know, <laughs> steadily rises. So, you know, you, you can't fault either one of those people. You can't fault the, the rehabber uh, for wanting to get their job done at a certain price. You can't fault the contractor for wanting to make sure that they get their jobs in and thinking, you know, honestly thinking that the job can be done for that price. Well, if it's an experienced contractor, 
and he's just throwing out a number, you know, he should know what he's doing. If it's an inexperienced contractor and you haven't done your research, you haven't checked on him, and he's saying, yeah, that's not a problem. We can do that all day long. Well, you know, did you do all the research on him? Are you sure that he's the right person for the job? So that's kind of, I, I know I took a sideways turn there, but uh, that's what we're offering now. And it just came up uh, online uh, just starting today. We've got, uh, it's been in the works. I'm, Pete's been underground and he's been working on that like night and day the past couple, well, back the past four or five days. I mean, he's just been MIA. <laughs> Ivan hasn't got a hold of him. I haven't got a hold of him. We, we, Text, text him at 11 o'clock at night, about 1230 at night, he, he gets back with us. So he's just been uh, he's just been a hermit here, which is great. I mean, that's that's Pete. He just puts it all in. So getting back, we're checking the ARV, the bed and bath, the square footage, uh, rehab cost. That's what we're, where we stopped is the rehab cost. Kind of look over those. Uh, make sure that that's kind of an expectation that's that's meetable. Um, also, the lot size, the days on market. When we're and then the comps and that's what we're going to use our comps for doing all this research right here okay so that's where we're at let me see Oop. Uh -oh. where am i at backwards okay um this is what we will do from from you it goes to me the deal and i know we've gone through this but from you it comes to me from me it goes to ivan from Ivan, it comes back to me. Then we make an offer because normally what it is is I am the first in line with um, the uh, real estate or the person who's selling it because I'm the one that's, that, that deals with that. So then from me, we put an offer in, offer is accepted, uh, we close the sale. If, it's, if, you, if it was given to us by you, you check to you. Next one is the check to you. So before we even start anything, once it's in escrow, uh, once we close escrow, there will be an allotted amount of money set aside for the bird dog. And I know a lot of you have asked me that, well, what's the price and how much it is? On, on, the, on another one of our webinars, we went through the, the, the structure and the breakdown. It's If you can kind of think between 5 and 9% is basically what it's going to come down to. And that's just a, a broad figure, a broad number. There's no set hard number that that comes across it, it just it just varies um, but you will know before we, we before we close or before we even go to that so um, check goes to you we start the rehab we finish the project we list the property that once we get an offer accepted we close the deal we start it over we go over and over and over we just keep doing it that's that's what we're doing right now um, we've got offers out right now we've got quite a few offers out waiting for one to land and come back. It's just a. It's just a prof. It's just a process. It's a process for a profit. And there we go. So we, in all of our deals, obviously you don't you don't walk into any of them that you want to lose money. You don't walk into any of them that um, that you have no expectation of not making money because that's what I've started the whole beginning of this uh, this webinar on is you know the end goal is a profit. That's that is the goal for doing any rehab that we do is a profit. If we don't, uh, if we don't have that, then we don't even get involved in it. So, if there's no, if there's no profit in it, it goes from you to me, and then it goes back to you. <laughs> so we miss all these other. Uh, I don't even send it to I Ivan. I mean, if there's from the very beginning, if there's nothing, if there's nothing in it, if I can't see money in it, then it stops. The buck stops with me. So, so you don't waste your time, and you don't waste everybody. You know, waste a lot of time is you know make sure that that works make sure that there's money in it. And I'm going to go over that right here. I think it's this one. Here's where we'll spend some time. <laughs> so grab a pen, grab a pencil, however you want to do it. And I'm going to try and go through this as, as easy as we can. And if there's any questions, stop me, raise your hand or type it in. Okay. See where the money's at. This is, this is, this is what I do all day long to see where the money is. Anything that you guys send me, hold on one second. Anything you guys send me, I basically go through this process right here. This is what you can do in your computer. You have all the tools that you have. Think of it this way. If you live in Florida and I'm in Las Vegas, 
and you're looking at a deal, you've possibly, you quite possibly have driven by the house. You've possibly uh, talked to the realtor, got information, know what's inside the house, know what's going on. Well, all, obviously all that stuff should come to me. But if not, and you just decide to say, 123 Grape Street is the property and it's for sale. For 200, the, the, it's, it's for sale. Just, just, just stop it at that. What am I supposed to do with that? Well, if I've got the address and I've got a sale price, I can do the exact same thing that you could do. But the problem with that is I get 25 emails a day, and if I were to spend all my day just looking at deals that you guys send me, let alone the deals that I look up my own, I have realtors that call me on, on stuff that I have. I have realtors in Southern California, uh, Las Vegas, Florida, um, there's two other places, but they call me or email me all the time. So not only do I do this webinar with you guys to try and get generate money in your bank account, I'm also generating money in my bank account through other sources doing real estate. So understand that. The easier it is for me to look at the deal to say yes, like I've We've done a webinar on that, how to, how to say, help me say yes to your deal. <clears throat> if you were to just take these extra steps, take 10 minutes, 15 minutes out of, out of your time to look at them to make it easier for me, that way the quicker it gets past me, the quicker it gets to Ivan. The quicker it gets to Ivan, the quicker it gets back to me, and the quicker it gets money to you. And I'm just trying to say that in all frankness that's the easiest way to get it going i think someone's got their hand raised up over here i keep looking over here i'm sorry guys so this is the breakdown that i, that I go over again stop me <clears throat> if you have a question if, the, if you don't understand what i'm going through okay so you're going to send me one two three grape street i'm going to go on google maps i'm going to go on on zillow <clears throat> which i say do not take zillow as the God's honest truth because I, I won't take uh, comps from there. I only take comps when I'm doing my research. If there's a question about it, if it's close, then I talk to a realtor in, in Florida. And I'm just giving Florida as an example. So 123 Grape Street in Florida is what we're to use for right now. So <coughs> you send me over a deal, 123 Grape Street, Florida, uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay? So I'm going to get there. And, and I don't even know what the price is. You're going to tell me that the price is, the, the, the price is $180,000 for this, for this property. Now I'm going to write this down because I got most of this stuff done. So 123 Grape Street is $180,000. That's the asking price, $180,000. So I say, okay, let's, let's, see what, uh, let's see what we can offer these people for this house. So I go through all of the information. I, I look up Zillow. I, I'm, I'm confident with Zillow. I've talked with a, with a, a realtor out there. My ARV is going to be two hundred thousand dollars. When I get done, when I get done with this, when we go to list and sell this property, two hundred thousand dollars is what I feasibly am looking at. Okay. So, in my spreadsheet, I said, "How much money do I want to make on this deal?" It just so happens I said, "Okay, twenty-five thousand dollars." This in the red. $25,000, if I can make $25,000 off this deal that they want $180,000 for, I have to figure out what my offer is going to be. Plain and simple. You could input any number into these. These are just a basic, basic number. And I'll, I'll try and break them out as in, to percentages as best as I can. <clears throat> so we've got an ARV of $200,000. They're asking $180,000 for the pro property. One, two, three, Grape Street. My profit that I'm looking to get is $25,000, okay? With the pictures that they've sent me, with the pictures that you've sent me, with all the information that I've roughly got from everything, is I think we're going to need to spend about $20,000 to rehab this, this project. Now, it might need a bathroom, it needs all new paint, needs carpet, and it needs tile and just the basics. <clears throat> so I'm estimating, guesstimating $20,000. This is, this is, I'm gonna walk through this again. This is the first step. This isn't the final step, but this is the first step when it comes to me. So if you can make this as easy as possible, for me, this is what I'm gonna be looking at. 
once I look at this, it goes off to Ivan. And then if there's a discussion where Ivan says, no, I think we need to, I think we need to make 35,000 on this, then we adjust the numbers. So once again, we're going to know our profit before, not during or after. We're going to have a projected profit that we want to hit. Okay. So one, two, three, Grape Street, they're asking 180. The ARV is 200. So this is, this is where a lot of it stops and people have sent me deals and say, there's $20,000 in this deal. Do you want to put an offer in on it? Now, that is the issue that I, that I seem to be having quite a bit lately. It's not profit if there's $20,000 in it because we haven't taken into consideration anything else. Now, I might be speaking beneath a lot of you that are listening, 38 people that are listening. I might be speaking way beneath you, and I apologize for that. But I want to get back to the basics for a lot of the people that are having a tough time in understanding and, and grasping this. So right there, I know that the person either I haven't I haven't done my job and helped you enough to tell you that twenty thousand dollars is not in that deal. So that's why we need to go through this. So hundred eighty thousand dollars is the asking price. We want to make twenty five. Rehab is going to cost us twenty. Okay. Holding cost, holding cost, which we went, just went over earlier. That's the gas, the electric, the water, the um, electricity. All those are holding costs. If you're using hard money, how much is it costing you to keep that money? I, I don't know. That's you know, for us, I know what I know what ours is, but I don't know if it's if you're doing this by yourself, what your costs are. So I figured for the holding costs, if it takes us three months to do it. The, the gas, electric, water, um, maybe there's an HOA due. You know, maybe the dues, maybe you have a, a homeowner association that is charging you, you know, $200 a month. Well, we're going to all, we're going to know that in the beginning, but that's money that has to be factored back into the job. Okay. So $180,000, we have, we want to make, they're asking $180,000. The ARV is $200,000. Our profit that we want to hit is $25,000. Holding, our rehab costs are 20. Our holding costs, gas, electric, water, HOA dues, just minuscule. And sometimes you're going to have to estimate on that. I'm not saying that these are hard numbers and, and you can adjust these as, as close to as you can. You know, you can go back on um, past electric bills, past water bills. What if you had a past water bill that was $500 for the month? You know you're going to possibly have a water leak out there. And if you don't realize that and you, and you let it go for two months, that's a thousand extra dollars. So I always keep a little bit extra for the holding cost. If you're paying, if you're paying hard money, that's, and they're, and they're charging you 13%, 15%, you have to factor that in. Is it costing you, is it costing you $600 a month for that loan? $300 a month for that loan? I don't know because I don't know the particulars. This is a, this is, if you read up here, to see where the money is and how to get a quick, get a price to, to, to purchase this one okay so now we're de the holding cost is we've gone over that now fees this is where a lot of times people don't don't anticipate you know and a lot of times what we can do also is 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 combine the holding cost and the fees the fees are the realtors cost now if you look at that and we have a have a sale price of 200 at and I've got fees at 20,000 you're gonna say well realtors only charge you six percent you're absolutely right. I use 10%. Why? Because that 10, that extra 4% is anything extra that's going to cost me in my rehab costs. Okay. Now you may have been taught differently. You may not like the way this is done, but this is where I save myself. So if my rehab, if my rehab goes over $20,000, I pull that extra money from my fees. Okay. So we already know, I already know from the very beginning when I write this and I pencil this out, and this is where Ivan knows where I have extra money so he can adjust the numbers. So if, if you're looking in here, I, I keep myself buffers. So that 25,000 absolutely can go up if I don't have any overruns on my rehab cost. And if my fees are, are not going to be 10%, they're going to be 6%. So right there, I've got an extra $7,000. So if my rehab if I, if all of a sudden I got a busted water main or if I have a, a sewer that's, that's broken, that's just, we just had that $1,600 it cost us 
on an unforeseen broken sewer line. So I already know my prop, my profit's not going to move from there. My profit is, I'm still within my $25,000 profit. So does everyone, I, I know I'm, I hope I'm not being too basic and I hope that I'm explaining it well enough for you. If there's anybody, and I'm going to stare out here. If there's anybody that needs any more clarification on that, please ask me here and ask me now because I'd like to spend as much time on this slide as you guys need. We could use other examples if you want, but this is the, this is the simplest way I can explain it to you. Okay. So one, two, three, let's break it down. One, two, three Grape Street in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The people are asking $180,000 for it. What am I going to offer? The way I've broken it out here is my offer price is going to be $125. Okay? So some people are going to go, well, you're low-bottom, you're everything else. Well, if I want to make a profit, which we started from this very beginning of this show, that is the reason we're in this. I'm not going to sit there and offer them, if they're asking 180, I'm not going to offer them 170 and feel as though I'm getting a great steal on this property because it's not. It's not going to happen. Okay? I've also, if you look in here, I've also built myself buffers to where I'm not going to have to dig into my profit. Now, if, if we look at this and say, well, I want to make more than 25000 that's not a problem. Where that money comes from is off of your offer price. If you want to make 50000 on this, your offer would be 100000 Very simple. Also, if you, if you think that you can make more on this, well, I already know that I have a buffer in my fees. Remember, that's 10%. That, that fees should also be slash realtor cost. That's it. The fees are realtor cost. That's how I, that's how I break it out. And I keep it as simple as this guys I don't make it any more complicated any more crazy than this now on my on my other one I'm also going to this is just to find out the price now on my other sheet with my comps my bed and bath my square footage that's a whole separate whole separate piece of paper and a whole separate you know spreadsheet that I go on to make sure that I'm right within the comps so when I come up with this ARV this is a solid ARV okay so if I, if I don't go over on my rehab costs, my rehab costs are exactly 20000 My fees are exactly 6%. I've got, I'm making more on my profit. The profit, is, the profit automatically, there's your magic. The profit automatically goes up. Okay? But, again, if all of a sudden my rehab, now, it might, now I've got a, a $2,000 uh, sewage bill, a new new sewer line that goes in there. Am I still going to be making my twenty five thousand? Absolutely, because I built myself a buffer into the fees. You know, I know a lot of people don't like. They go, "Well, you're being unrealistic on your fees." Well, that's absolutely fine if I'm unrealistic. Because if I'm unrealistic, I'm not going to lose money at the end, unless something catastrophic happens. And I can't have too many catastrophic episodes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this very long. Okay, so that is quickly how to get a price and I've gone over it probably for the last 15 20 minutes now so raise your hand throw out any questions you have if there's something doesn't make sense if something doesn't look off or something looks off and you don't understand that and I apologize greatly if I'm talking if you feel as though I'm talking below and you guys all know this and, and, and everything is wonderful this is also going to go up on YouTube and, and in our in our on our landing page for people that ask you know, how do I get the number and what, what do I do? Okay, here's a question. Perfect. How do, how do I process for sale by owner properties? The exact same way. If, 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 you, if you go into, okay, so there, the for sale by owner would be the exact same thing. 123 Grape Street in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, the for sale by owner is asking $180,000. My fees, if this is what you're asking about the fees going to change, those fees are me selling the property. Those, aren't me, those fees are not me buying the property. So you're almost going to have more room to work with the for sale by owner because you have to understand they're paying the fees. They, they've got an extra 6% on there that they have to pay the, the realtor. So that $180,000 that they're asking for, they're really basically only going to get 168, 166 something because the realtor is going to be charging them 
to sell it. So that's the for sale by owner properties is exact same one, except you might have a little bit more room to work with them because you could point out to them that, and then that's exactly what we're doing in Westlake Village right now. There's a property, a million, the, the, um, the ARV on them is like $2.2 .2 million. And this lady wants to get out of her prop, out of her house. And she, you know, she's thinking, well, she could sell it for more. It needs a complete rehab, updated rehab, not a tear down rehab. But we're telling them, listen, you know, if, if you sell it for a million three, a million four, it needs three hundred thousand dollars worth of rehab. If you list it for a million five with the realtor, you're going to get a million three. So if we just give you a million three five, you're you're making more money. So you have a lot more room to work with the for sale by owner. But this is exactly the same process. Nothing changes. Thank you for that question. Um, here's another one. Uh, how do you get the hard money on a home? Do they look at the home or you and your credit? How do you get money on a, on a how do you get hard money on a home? Well, number one, each hard money lender has their own criteria. Some do not ask for credit. Um, the ones that normally don't ask for credit are going to charge you a higher interest rate and a, and a couple of points at the front end. A point, if I'm going over, a point at the front end is. Um, is 1% of the sale price. Diane, I'm going to get to you in a minute. I see your hand raised. Um, so that's it. Uh, Mike, I'm going over it again. How do you get the hard money on a home? Do they look at the home? Yes, they are going to look at the home. They're going to do the, I don't know the exact same thing. They're going to find out the ARV of that home. They're going to get um, comps. They're going to do the exact same thing that we do, the exact same thing that I'm asking you to do. That's what they do. They're going to make sure that their money's secure. They're not going to loan you $200,000 on a $250,000 house. That's not going to happen. So that's what they do. So they do two different things. Um, they're going to check you out. Some do, some don't. If they don't check you out, you're, you're probably going to pay a little bit more on the money, meaning you're going to pay a higher interest rate and more points. So that's that one. Diane's got her hand raised. Let me get you on, hon. Diane, are you there? Did can you hear me? I can hear you now, hon. How are you? Pretty good. Good. Um, I just had a quick question. So this breakdown that you just gave us, is this another way of doing that 65% rule? Basically. Basically it's a it's a back end way. If if you don't if you don't like working with percentages, this is a better this is an easier way. Okay. If that makes sense. And it's just it's just it's almost like a plug and play. You know, the, the first number you need is your ARV so that you know what you can sell it for. You know, this this 200000 that I got here, it could be a range of you've got properties between 190 and 215 Where do you feel comfortable at selling your property? Now, see, that ARV number, that's another thing. I never list my property at the highest price. There's no reason to. There's absolutely no reason to. If you've got a great property, a great uh, a, a great um a great product that you're putting out there. Let people want it. Let more than one person want it. So this this ARV could quite possibly could go up to 210. I don't know. I don't know what what someone's willing to pay for that property. But I'm but I am pricing it at a fair market value with no questions asked. There's there's not going to be someone going to walk into my property, any of my properties, and go, "This is overpriced." There's no reason to. There's absolutely no reason to. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. You answered my question. Thank you. You're welcome, dear. Okay, one more. Oh, there's another question. Uh, how do you figure out the rehab cost if you've never done this before? Well, <laughs> that is the million-dollar question, and that is what what where we came up with this um, uh, this rehab consulting uh, with with Coast to Coast that that I just went over earlier. But the the best way to do it. Um, if you feel as though you could do it on your own, we can help you out with that as far as as many pictures as you can get um, from the experience that we've got uh, been in contracting for 25, 24 years, um, have quite a few rehabs under our belt on, on what the basic costs should be. Um, but how do I how do you figure out the rehab cost if you've never done this before? Um, the best thing is, is the more information and I'm just saying. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just saying if you need help from us, the best thing to do and you're looking to bird, bird dog and sell the property to us or 
let us buy the property and, and compensate you is to give us as much information and I will help you walk you through it. Um, different parts of the United States are different costs on things. Um, a, a sewer line, like I've been saying, a sewer line in Atlanta was, 50, was $1,600. In California, it might be $3,500. So that's when it's that's when it just takes some research and going through. What'll happen also a lot of times is I will go and uh, I will call a couple contractors, or I'll have you call a couple contractors to meet you out there, give you a price that we don't expect you to know the price of every toilet in every state or how much it's going to cost to run a new sewer line. So the more you ask questions, the more we're willing to help you. Okay, if that if that helps out, uh, and pictures, you know, there's a lot of times we could look at pictures and get a fairly close rough uh, estimate on how much that should cost. You know, there's some people go good, mild, moderate as, or, you know, fair, terrible and ridiculously bad. You know I mean? It's just, there's, there's certain, you know, areas that you can, you can kind of guess on. Um, there's things that are going to be, how am I, how am I trying to say this? There's going to be some things that are going to be hard, you know, uh, as far as a kitchen. Kitchen's going to cost you if you have to replace cabinets, everything else. I usually I usually account for about $15,000 for a kitchen. Now, that's a standard kitchen. If you're going to put Wolf and Viking appliances, uh, Carrera marble, all this other stuff, obviously that's going to go up. So we just kind of take – that's that's another thing we do is we look at the ARV. We look at what the market will bear. We look at what the types of houses are selling. That's when I use my realtor again. I use my realtor. What what does this house need to have? Does it need granite countertops or is it okay with Corian? Is it okay with Corian or can I get away with putting Formica in? I've never put a Formica top in, but some of the lower end properties I know people do. So that's how you're not expected to know everything on as far as prices on rehabs and everything else. So any information that you need or anything that you that you need help with, that's scott at c2creia.com. So that's how we can help you with that. So I hope that answered that. So if we can come back to the slide, I, I'm, this was the majority of what I wanted to go over because this is what uh, a lot of the issues that I think that, that I've been seeing come across is, you know, <clears throat> there's a property that's that's on the market for 180 and the ARV all over, all up and down is 200,000. Well, that's just not, there's no money in it. You can't, you can't get money out of that property. So what I would offer is 125. If the, if the realtors or if people that I'm working with are too embarrassed to offer that 125 and I can justify why I'm asking to buy it at that price, then that realtor you don't want to work with. We just, I just got rid of a realtor, one of our million dollar realtors, <clears throat> Because in that in that arena, they are very conscious of their reputation. And as far as I'm concerned, it's just another house. I, I could care less if it's fifty thousand or fifty million. It's just another house. It, if it makes some money, if there's profits in it, then I want it. <clears throat> That's it. Plain and simple. She was too good to think that she couldn't put a low enough offer in and be rejected. What do you say to that? <clears throat> you know, I, I, I said, thank you very much and walked away, you know, and, and, and I was working, I went to California twice, went out with her on lunch, lunches. We went to look at houses, great rapport. Everything was working fine. Told her exactly how we were working it. All of a sudden she decided that uh, she didn't want to. Um, and, and the thing about it was, is I wasn't putting in low ball offers. It was 10% under the market. She felt as though that uh, we weren't going to be buying any of these properties, even though we had them under contract. You know, <clears throat> you can't tell what the motivation of some people are. But this is getting, you know, that's kind of a side note. But this is it. This this slide, you know, take a screenshot of it. Leave it on your, on your, on your uh, computer. I'll leave it up here. Do what you need to. But this is basic. Just put on there, 123 Grape Street, and hopefully that will – Click your, click your mind in there, okay? This is exactly how I'm going to go over it. This is exactly going to tell you how much profit you're going to make. This is going to tell you what your offer should be. You're going to know that in your fees, if you account for 10%, and this is, this is what I do, I will account for 10% in my fees, only because I know that I'm going to have about 4 to 5% as extra money for my rehab, okay? 
that's where it's going to save me. So that, that means if all of a sudden my contractor says, hey, we need to put this in, I know that I'm going to have a little extra money down here. And this little extra money, if it doesn't go to the, if it doesn't go to the, to the contractor for rehab, it goes back into my pocket. Okay? So take a picture. I'll leave it up here for another couple seconds. And once again, if you want to ask any questions or raise your hand, <clears throat> do it now. Because I'm going to move on to the next one. We're kind of wrapping up. It's, it's Labor Day, and I, I'm sure everyone's got everything else to go to do and end their weekend. But uh, I just appreciate everybody being here. So we'll move on. Um, check and check again. You know what I mean? That's the, uh, that's, that's the mantra. You know, keep calm and check your work and then check it again. Because I, I showed you the slide that we do. From you to me to me to Ivan to Ivan to me to back to you. I mean, just that's the, that's the routine. That's the cycle that we go through. <clears throat> we don't skip them. We don't, we don't try and push the numbers through. We don't try and make the numbers up. And I said try, but we don't. We, we, we can't because uh, in the very, very beginning was, was, was the, the slide, you know, why are you in this? It's for the profit. What is the deal? Just because there is a spread between the purchase and the sale price does not mean that there's money left for a profit. Okay? Just because there's a spread between the purchase, say we're buying it for 180, and the sale price of 200 does not mean that there's money left for a profit. Okay? Just get that, get that through your heads. You know, sometimes you'll look at a deal and say, oh my gosh, there's $25,000 into this deal. You haven't taken account of your realtor costs, your rehab, your holding costs. Okay, so that twenty-five thousand dollars is gone, quick. Okay, um, do you still use the same formula for abandoned houses? Yes, same formula. You have to have the base of your ARV, your rehab, your fees, your holding costs, in, in, and your profit in proportion to your offer price. Has to be. Doesn't matter what the what the property is. You have to do that. Your abandoned homes. I'll, I'll let you know. You're probably going to be spending more in your rehab. Um, it almost sounds as though you have have a deal that's out there that uh, that there could be something going on. Um, since you had, same person asked for the sale by owner and abandoned properties and the um, the process. If you want to get a hold of me, just Scott at C two C. I'll be more than happy to go over with you. My phone number is on there also, and there's four people on here that I know I've talked to on the phone, five that I've talked to on the phone. So I am accessible. Um, you know, send it over to me, give me a call and, uh, we'll, we'll walk through it with you. Okay. Um, so remember just because there's a spread between the purchase and the sale does not mean that there's money left in for a profit. Okay. And that's what we did. That's what these are for. That's where your profit is. Know where your profit is the whole time. That, that, you know, that's what you need. Okay. So don't be a millionaire. Everyone, <laughs> someone having little to no money. And there's a lot of people that have started in real estate that, that are millionaires. They think that they're going to be millionaires and they go through the whole thing. But if they don't check, recheck, their numbers. That's what it is. And I'll be honest with you. That's what, that's what got me into a few binds, um, doing it myself. I didn't have anybody checking my work thinking that I've got everything under control. Not a problem. I know that that's what, what Ivan's run into, you know, but Ivan, and here's the, here's the thing. Ivan, mostly his problems were with the contractor. My problems never were with the contractor. I, I, my very first rehab, I had, I got into an argument with the contractor and it was over with. We got it done. You know, he didn't walk off the job and say he's going to stop. I didn't say I wasn't going to pay him. We had an argument. We had a discussion. We walked through it and it was done. You know, there, you, you have to keep your emotions out of it if you can. Obviously, there's emotions running high and dry, you know, going through every rehab that you go through, you know, good and bad. So, you know, that's what we're here for. That's what I'm here for. If you have a deal, um, there's someone that's, I, no, she's not on, but I'm going to tell you, I probably, this last week, I probably got 18 deals sent for, f to me from her. And I wish she was on here because this is normally what, what, what's happening is there's no money in them. You know, and, and I, don't want, I don't want you guys to waste your time 
and then, you know, get mad because number one, I don't have, you know, I don't get back with you or I don't, um, not that I don't get back with you, that I don't say, yes, we're going to do this deal because it, it, there's just no money. We can't, we can't do that. You know, we'll, we'll be in business for such a short time. It wouldn't even work out. And then when you guys go to do it yourselves, or if you are doing it yourself, you know, you're going to see that there, there's no money. Okay. Another one. Um, it sounds like it just has to be very clear from the start. Mike, you're absolutely right. You know, you're absolutely right. If, if, uh, you know, and, and there's a continuation with it. Uh, it sounds like it has to be very clear from the start. And then the next one is with the contractor. Yes. Expectations on both sides. You know, that contractor is expecting to get paid. He's expecting to put money in his bank. You're expecting to, for him to do the job and get the property sold. You know, I mean, that's, you know, that's what you're leveraging on. You're both leveraging on each other. You know, you want to get it done quick. He wants to get paid quick. That's it. And you want the job done right. So, you know, when you put unrealistic expectations on each other, both for both sides, I don't care. You know, the contractor could put some unrealistic expectations on you. I want to get paid. You know, I want to get paid every other week. Well, that's not, that's not the way I work my deals. My contracts are very simple. I do three payments and people go, well, my gosh, I, only three payments. I do three payments and that's it. I'll give you a thousand. Well, actually there's four, a deposit, a deposit and three payments. I'll give you a thousand dollars to sign the contract. After I sign the contract, I send in a thousand dollars to, to lock me in, to get me on the schedule. It's what I do. Well, I don't need that. That's what I want to, I want, I want it so that you have verification that you have now accepted this contract and you've started. And the minute that you sign that contract and cash that check is at the end of the contract, I have a drop dead date. So that's a finish date. So that starts from that time. It's not when you walk onto my job site. It's from the time that I send you that deposit. See, there's little tricks that you could do. And it's not tricking the contractor. It's making sure that the contractor's on board and making sure that the contractor is set up. First draw. Once you get a, a trash ban, once you have workers on my job site, it's 25% of the contract. Let's just go round numbers. $100,000 rehab job. You get $1,000 when we sign the contract. Then you get $25,000 once you get people on the, onto the job site. Start working. There should be no reason that contractor is not going to start working. He's got money. He's got money to go. And then you have, a, you have another set date of what is expected for that $25,000. You have it written out. I expect the front yard to be torn out, the roof to be torn off, the inside demo to be done, blah, 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 whatever it is. Okay. Once you get to the, then you say, okay, the next, the next, um, the next phase is ABCD. He gets $50,000. Okay. $50,000. So he's got $75,000 to get this stuff done. He will not collect the final 25% until I have, until we have a walkthrough and a, and a check, um, uh, a punch list. Punch list means that any, anything that's wrong in the house needs to be checked off, needs to be fixed. That's it. It's simple. He's got money. I've got expectations of him. That's it. It's very, very, very simple. I, I, that's the way when I was doing my, my jobs, that's the way I wanted it to work. I wanted you to be happy with the work that was done. And I wanted to be happy because I was depositing a check. That's it. It's, you know, a lot of people just get this so combobulated that it's just, uh, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be that way. Mike, can you send me a copy of your contract, of my, of my pool contract? I'd be more than happy to. Of a contract of someone else, I don't know what their contract is. I will, I will adjust their contract to my needs, to my wants. So that's what I will do. I mean, I can, we can go over it. If you have someone, Mike, if you have someone that, that is going to give you a contract that wants you to go over it, that's what the, that's what the uh, rehab consulting is. We'll look at the contract and we adjust the contract. Adjust the contract to make it. This is the this is the other thing. You know, a lot of the men, the the gurus, the masterminds, they say, "Well, you need to make it so it's a beneficial to you." As a contractor, I'm not going to sign if if it's completely beneficial to you. There's no way. There's no way I'm going to do that. So I'm going to. You know, that's that's why we'll adjust the contract to make it make the expectations of both parties realistic. And that's it. If the contractor looks at it and says, this is unrealistic, then okay, then we move on. You have to, you have to do that. But um, I'm, I'm setting up, I think what we're going to do, Mike, is, and this is the question from Mike, um, 
is we'll probably set up some type of contract that's a generic one. Um, but if a, but if a customer came to me and gave me a contract, I, I wouldn't go off of it because I've, I've worked off my own contract and I know the legal um, rights that I have with my contract. So, you know, most of my contracts were drawn up by attorneys. So I know, you know, how to cover myself and the contractors know how to cover themselves. So um, we might make up something generic to kind of follow as a guideline, but I, I don't have a contract that I can send you that you can, you know, line item fill in and then hand it to your contractor, hope that he signs it and then come back. So that's, uh, sorry about that, but I, I, I just don't. Um, so, but that's a, that's an awesome question. Um, we're coming down to the end here. Make sure you have money at the end. <laughs> you know, I, I think that that's what we've gone through this whole, this whole webinar. And in the beginning I have, um, I've gone through, hold on, there's an add on to this question. Uh, do you add to their contract? Absolutely, Mike. Um, this is a, a continuation of the question. Can you send me a cop? I don't have a contract that I give to the thing. Uh, do you add to their contract? Absolutely. Yes, you add to their contract. Um, and you make sure that they initial it and you make sure that you initial it so that you both both see it. And th that could be as simple as looking at the contract. Normally what will happen is, is the contractor will send you their contract. You, you look it over and see it and then you and then you talk with them and say, hey, on, you know, on paragraph two, when you're going to be replacing the, uh, the, uh, the roof, can you make sure that you put in there that it's going to be a 30 year shingle, whatever? You know, I mean, you can add anything to a contract. As long as you both initial it and both agree to it, that's that's not a problem at all. I, I used to have my contracts where people would ask for stuff on it, and I was fine with that. You know, as as long as it worked within, and it wasn't it wasn't as though if you add on to the contract, if you have a, a set price of a hundred thousand dollar rehab, and you want to add on to the contract that now you want to put in those wolf appliances for that hundred thousand, uh, you know, that's a negotiation that you should that you should have before you sign the contract. You could put it in there, but you know, make sure that it's reflected in either the purchase order when he goes to purchase something, if it's that type. But I would I would stay away from trying to stick it to the contractor, you know, in a in a contract because he's he's not gonna usually they're gonna catch stuff like that. But if it's something legitimate, absolutely add to the contract all day long. Just just make sure you both agree to it. Okay. Um, make sure you have money at the end of this. Like I said from the beginning. That's that's what you're in it for. Make sure that there's profit. You know, know where your risk is, the profit. Know where your losses are. Know where you're going to spend money. Um, and that's simple. I'm going to put it back up before we go on. Um, before we go to the end, is you know, just break those numbers out. You know, take that, study it, look at it, see it, live it, love it. You know, um, let's see what it is. There it is. Just quickly. It's an easy. It's it's going to save you. It's going to save you from looking at MLS, the MLS listings, and looking at it and go, hmm, there looks like there's $30,000, $50,000 in it. Well, as you can see from the from the end, yes, I am, dear. <laughs> am I still on? Yes, I am. Um, you can see where the money gets eaten up at, okay? So there you go. It's, it's up again. So if you need a screenshot of it or if you want to write it down, um, and you can plug any of the any numbers in. Obviously, they're all going to change. Your profit can change. Your ARV is going to change from your from your city and your where you're at. Your profit, you can determine whether you want to make twenty five or hundred thousand. Your rehab costs are going to change. Your holding costs are going to change, and your fees are going to change. But this is just a generic. If you just have a, a two hundred thousand ARV, and remember it's one two three Grape Street, um, and they were asking one hundred eighty thousand for it, and our pro, and our offer was going to be one twenty five with those numbers up there. So. Make sure you have money at the end. Your profit lost. Know where your break even is. Profits, profits, profits. That's what you want to get done. So um, we're wrapping it up. And uh, glad to uh, come with your bride. <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Um, yes, I am wrapping this up. I was going to go short, but it seems as though we we took the whole hour and ten minutes. Um, here's here's how to contact me. There's me and my wife there. Um, Scott at C2CREIA.com. This will be um, bird dogging number 15. And I might just name it 123 Grape Street just, just for fun because we've, we've, we've hammered that one over. Um, that's, that's where we're at. Uh, contact me on Facebook. Friend me. We'll get it going. 
I also didn't put up their bird dog and opportunities with Scott Travis. Uh, we have our own little uh, page inside there on Facebook. So if you go in there and you have any questions, just ask them in there throughout the week or get in contact with me. It seems as though dinner's getting ready because my wife is shuffling around in the kitchen. So with that, I'm going to sign off and you guys have a great Labor Day. And I appreciate all of it that you guys have uh, showed up for. Uh, next Monday, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, we'll be here. Okay? Thank you. Have a good night.